Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be having a look at the Flying RC H7W Lite Mark I. This is, I think, their first H743 flight controllers. And the reason why I bought it was because it just came in at an incredibly low price of 30 euros. Um, this was just crazy compared to all the other competitors that are selling at prices above 100 euros sometimes for a flight controller like this. So let's have a look inside. Uh, let's see what we actually get. You have the QR code which you can scan to go straight to their website. You also have written down on this box that this is using um, INAV uh, Matec H743 firmware, so that's nice. Uh, comes packaged like this, uh, nice solid box actually, uh, protects the components during transportation, which I like. Comes with this, uh, I think it's a six pin cable, yeah, it's a six pin that connects to the USB C and a very, very, very low profile, which I also like. It's a very low profile uh, buzzer. Obviously, you can turn that on and off. Boot button, standard, um, a very nice and easily accessible uh, micro SD card slot. And if we have a closer look, I'm going to zoom into this a little bit. You can see that the quality of the board is actually quite solid. I mean, there's nothing that sticks out. I have not disassembled this and I will disassemble it now here on camera because I'm just super curious what we get inside. Um, construction is pretty much like any other wing flight controller, um, but it's nice and small. And I like that because a lot of aircraft that I want to use this on are tiny little things <laughs> and it's good to have a small flight controller whereas the, uh, the one from Matek is relatively large compared to this. Let's have a look. So there's an interconnect uh, between the two boards. This is obviously the power management board. That's the processor board. And we can see what they've done here is quite interesting. And actually, it says Mark 1, but when you look at the pictures online, this might actually not be a Mark 1. This might actually be a Mark 2 version of the board because... I don't think I've seen that. Uh, I'm 99% sure that this is where the barometer is hidden and it's hidden behind a shield, uh, which is also very interesting because we haven't seen that ever on any flight controllers, as far as I remember. You can also see the difference between most other flight controllers and this one being that the main processor is actually not with the pins on the side, but actually with solder balls underneath. So it's a smaller processor that can fit onto a smaller board, which is nice. It's got the standard um, analog chip, which I don't think many people use nowadays anymore. Uh, at least the ones that I know, most of us are either on DJI or whatever. So that's that looks pretty decent. Um, front and back looks solid. You can see it's actually quite good, good quality. Yeah, the soldering looks looks to be quite nice. Let's have a look at the other board now. Here we have a bunch of components. <laughs> um, okay, so. I guess this must be a TVS diode and I'm assuming that there is a 5 volt controller, a variable controller so that you can select between 5 volts, 6 volts and 7 volts. Is that right? Yes. So you can choose what you want. That's okay. That's good. And um, that's basically for the for the servo outputs. Yeah. Um, just 
for information. It does say where the front and the back is. So when you have this, it does show you that it's uh, clockwise 90 degrees flip. That's what you should select. But leaving it as default, so not changing anything, will be the correct thing, okay? So when you flash iNow firmware, you don't need to change that. It, it's just straight out of the box, correct. Um, don't know why they have head and tail, because that refers more to coins, but we all know what they're referring to, so that's okay. And then we've got our uh, S1, S2, S3, S4, and so on and so forth, and then it continues with S11, 12, and 13 on this side, like that, which is nice. So we've got a total of 13 outputs, okay? Uh, UART ports as per regular, and then we also have the CAN bus connection, okay? So that would be the same as uh, what Maytag is using. Same connector, I think, as well. So all in all, seems like a very, very decent little board, right? Now, I've just got to make one thing clear. Um, why am I doing this video and why did I buy this? Matex boards are nicely built. I don't think we can argue they're bad, but they're just overpriced. It's just paying for a brand. And okay, they've built this brand reputation over the years and maybe they deserve a little bit more credit in that sense, but how much more is the question. In the UK, the H743 from Maytech costs around £120. This thing cost me €30, Euros, including shipping. €30 Euros is around £25, £26, whatever. So that other flight controller costs approximately speaking, four times more, at least. If you get them on AliExpress, you might find them a bit cheaper, but it's about four times more. And that's a huge difference. Now, I'm not an expert on these components, okay, to be clear, but none of them cost as much as the main processor that's here, okay? You can find this one for anywhere between let's say 10 to 15 euros. If you buy at the quantities that these companies buy, then you definitely get it for less, which means Matex profit margins. I mean, these guys are making a profit, obviously, right? They're not selling for free. They're not manufacturing for free. They must be making some profit. So there is still profit in this at that low price where Matex flight controllers are constantly going up in price, here is another company that just made something that is an excellent little flight controller. And by the way, I did test this uh, to see if it's working. It was working fine. I haven't soldered anything to it yet, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So it's just something to keep in mind when spending your money on these companies. Some of them just go a little bit too crazy with their prices. And they used to be good and relatively affordable, but now they're just completely out of the budget. I mean, they're, they're taking your plane from costing, you know, below the 500 pound mark, including digital FPV and stuff like that. They're taking it to over 500 pounds for nothing. Okay. I'm talking like a full price. Whereas this is nice and cheap, you know? And I heard from some people that they might not be supplying this with the correct IMU. I don't think that's correct. I mean, this is very clearly the H743, you know, it's just in a smaller package. Or they're providing it with the wrong gyroscope, which is also not really a concern as long as it's working. And I think if you go on this online, it's actually using a dual uh, gyroscope design. So that's pretty nice. And none of the others have that as far as I know. Might be wrong. 
Uh, Arduino Pilot flight controllers probably do, uh, but you know, Maytech for that price, I'm certain that it doesn't. So yeah, it's just something to keep in mind uh, who you give your money to and where you spend it on, what you spend it on. Not for me to tell you, but uh, just keep in mind that there's other brands that are offering good quality for an affordable price. In the next video, I'll be installing this little guy in my new T1 VTOL uh, from Hewing that will complete my collection of Hewing planes because I think I've got them all now, <laughs> pretty much, in all their different versions. And I just want to see the, the little T1 and VTOL version because I love the VTOL of the T2. And I have a feeling that the T1 will be very exciting. So anyway, stay tuned for that video because that video will be using this flight controller. Anything, if anything goes wrong, then you'll find out about it. You'll definitely hear me complain. But I think everything will be okay. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you got a nice impression of what you get for your money, which is very good. <laughs> so. Initial thoughts, solid. Let's see what we do with it next. Thanks for watching.